We did the variable rate intelligence center pivot. I'm Nick Rogers. This is Blake Watkins, Dale Conrad, and Ryan Richardson. Uh, the objectives for our project was to create a functional tabletop model of an intelligence center pivot. And the importance of this is so that we can take it out and share the, uh, this te new technology with the industry. Uh, a little background on variable rate irrigation. Uh, these pivots have been studied for their advantages over a single rate system. This has the potential to improve the efficiency of inputs and increase crop yields. Um, a few of the design things we had to face in this project was uh, creating the management zones for our pivot, uh, to actually design the pivot, to create a model for the uh, pivot to be mounted to, create a tank and create a, or find pumps to use to run the pivot. A little bit of the theory behind our design. We wanted a map to show different features of what someone might see in a field. Um, we, could, we figured that we could do this in 180 degrees and make it a little bit more portable to where we would have a few different soil types, an area that, that's a pond that you wouldn't want to run any water on. This is a technical drawing that we did in AutoCAD. These are the ANSI symbols for sand, clay, and this is a swamp. We call it our boggy condition. And the blue is just a solid hatch. Um, as you move through each section, the nozzles will cut off and on corresponding with where it is on the map. And this is done by our PLC, and we actually have a switch plate that y'all will see whenever we demonstrate. And it clicks three micro switches to tell the, it, tell the PLC exactly where it is on the map. This is another technical drawing that we just drew up of our pivot design we kind of wanted to run at. We hit it pretty close um, from this side. This is the front of it if the pivot were out 90 degrees from the back. That would be about 11 inches tall and approximately 10 inches from center of the wheel to center of the wheel. Here's another one, and, and the big thing that we want you to look at on this drawing is the slope that we have. This is part of our recirculation system so that you don't have to continue to add water and water doesn't pull on top of the surface. We wanted it to drain straight back to the tank. This is the top view, and this just shows again about how wide it is and about how long from the base of the pivot. And one thing, too, that we had to look at was the spacing from here, from the base of the pivot to the edge of the board. If we brought it to the edge of this board, our pivot would actually only come out to about a 60-degree angle. So our map wouldn't be right. And the, close, the farther you went out, it would get more rotation on it, and it would go a full 180. But we ran into the problem of it would be too, it would go off the edge of the board and we couldn't deal with that because we wanted it to fit through a 36 inch door. Alright, so just uh, after all our design and everything was done, this is just a final kind of sum up of the results that we came up with. Uh, we do have a fully functional model of a variable rate center pivot. Um, we made it mobile, put it, mounted it onto a cart so uh, Dr. Hahn or whoever is going to use this thing can wheel around easily to whatever trade show or event class you know they're teaching, whatever they want to take it to. Um, like I said, it's being used as a teaching aid, and I hope they're taking the field days, possibly even Moultrie at the Ag Expo. Uh, this is just a big summary, like an overall picture of what we got. Um, here you can see this area here is a sandy area. Um, the next kind of brown color is our bog area with our pond here. And everything is sloped down to this corner where there's a funnel where our tank is mounted inside this box. Everything recirculates while the pivot is running. And that's just an upscale um, or up close look at the pivot. Uh, here you can see the micro switches and the switch plate that give us our inputs for the PLC to tell exactly where the pivot is. Uh, you can see the drive motors that we selected for the design. And uh, it's kind of hard to see here, but this is actually a blinking LED to simulate a GPS receiver like it would be on a full scale pivot. And uh, this is just inside the tank. This is the PLC that we ended up using and uh, the relays to reverse the uh, motors. Okay, for, uh, for our design, we had to have some way to contain all of the, uh, you know, 
pumps and uh, tanks and all that, and VLC and controls. So what we did, we built the box, and like Bill and uh, Blake said, we had to build it so we had a, a, a low corner so we can have adequate water drainage uh, once the pumps and all that run and operate. So you can see vaguely here, we've got our, our tank in here, and we've got our, our pumps in here uh, mounted in the tank. Uh, all that self-contained here, we've got a little bit of wiring that comes across. The PLC uh, power supply is up in here, and the PLC uh, controller is right there to operate all of it. Um, right now, we've kind of uh, estimated budget was about $2,000, and we ended up spending uh, roughly about $2,500 um, on materials. Uh, for the labor and fringe benefits, uh, we've averaged out about $9,400 in cost. So the total cost on it was roughly about $11,900. The future works that we're possibly looking at uh, is some of the pump designs as far as maybe what type pump would work better with a low voltage application. Uh, that was some of the problems that we run into. Um, also, uh, just being able to, um, I guess, perform more of a cost analysis uh, to better show, uh, you know, students or people that are interested in learning about the center pivot to you know explain to them what the benefit of it is you know how they're going to save if they use the intelligent center pivot um, and we're looking to possibly change up uh, switch plate for the plc um, for micro switches so if we need to make any changes we can change the maps out and have different maps and have it more to operate the different uh, sequences that's our capstone. Uh, so this is the uh, variable rate uh, center pivot model, which will demonstrate to y'all how it actually works at various water rate uh, throughout the field. If you look right here, it's kind of hard to see from the glare of the lights, but this area in particular here is a sandy area. Um, obviously, water leaches through sand a lot quicker, so. The rest of the, the pivot will actually slow down, and what's over the sandy area will get a full flow of water, while what's outside of the sandy area will get less flow of water. That way it's uniform across everything because of what will leach out from the sand. You look over the brown area there is our boggy or low line area, or we'll reduce the rate again, uh, not to over water the already soggy area. And that greenish blue place back there is our pond, and I'll just kind of ignore where the water's leaking through lamination at. Hmm. We're going to do that. They, they just for elimination. But here you see everything. There's a uniform soil type here, so everything's the same that's going through. Watch the end go to And uh, this LED light flashing here is simulating our GPS receiver and sending a receiving signal. You should have seen the first one we had. Yeah, the first one shoot about what? The first, the first one we had will probably shoot the other side of that maple. And uh, if you come over here too, you can look and see the actual micro switches and the grooves of the switch plate, you can cut on or off for reference to binary code for the inputs in the PLC. And uh, getting over across the pond, this outer two knobs will cut off. Once they get back to the box here, they'll cut back on again. <laughs> and then it reverses with the relays inside the cycle back through. You don't show them the inside, so we can tell see the bumps and all of uh, Yeah, the, uh, I don't know if you all noticed, but the center section, the wheels aren't actually running. And I ran into a problem there of having a fixed pivot on two separate planes to get the water to drain down into the uh, into the funnel there to recirculate. What we did think about doing is uh, we could have made it to where actually put a piece of pipe at each one of these joints so it would be like a flexible couple on the actual center pivot to allow the center wheels to touch at all the time. This thing cycles back around, y'all can do it in half as long. So we'll open up the box and let you see the tank we actually built. Uh, we can custom fabricate the tank from legs in and uh, put some in to house our homes. If y'all want to come over here and look, there's a bunch of 
like supplies and stuff in here in case anything were to break while you were uh, using it. But over here on this side, you can see the tank yeah, we constructed uh, with your pumps and everything, how it recirculates. Um, and then on this side, we have a power supply that goes from 120 AC to 12 volt DC, our PLC and our two relays, and all wiring and other hardware is housed inside of this box. along with some other supplies for future repairs.